clomiphene citrate actually contains two stereoisomers named enclomiphene and zuclomiphene. Vigorous Steve here. It's vigorous Q&A time. Yes, sir. For all of your bodybuilding related questions. Today, we're going to combine three questions in one video because they all ask about selective estrogen receptor modulator use. First question is from John Wagner. Is indefinite in clomiphene monotherapy a viable option for testosterone replacement therapy to maintain fertility? So he's asking about the use of enclomiphene by itself to raise endogenous testosterone production and thus improve fertility. The second question is from Alejandro Consuegra. Lots of hype behind enclomiphene lately. Is it superior to the other selective estrogen receptor modulators for a post cycle therapy? And is it really more selective for the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus? I'm assuming it com means compared to clomid or tamoxifen or loxifene, etc. Then the last question is from Niccolo Saints. Can I run oxandrolone and clomid together? And if I do, will I need a Remedex? I have all just want to know before I start. Anybody with knowledge, welcome to comment as well. Well, nobody commented, so here I am answering your question. But before we get into all of that, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And while you're there, hit the notification bell button so you can get notified whenever a new video drops. On the topic of the first question, can enclomiphene be a viable replacement for exogenous testosterone replacement therapy to raise serum testosterone levels? And can it maintain or improve fertility as part of an enclomiphene monotherapy protocol? And yes, it can. There's a lot of scientific evidence to support this. All you have to do is go to PubMed, type in enclomiphene with an F, and you get a ton of research. There's a lot of scientific evidence for it, but I believe it's only prescribed in this context in the United States. When I go to the American FDA database, I'll link it down below, when I type in enclomiphene with an F or pH, whether that's with or without citrate, I can't find the entry. So I'm not exactly sure if clomiphene is FDA approved. There are two brands out there, Androxol and Encyzix, that are tentative brands for enclomiphene. But as of now, I can't find any entries in the United States Food and Drug Administration database that enclomiphene under these two different brands is approved for medical use. I do know several compounding pharmacies and TRT clinics who prescribe enclomiphene, so it is available in the United States. But when you look at all of the other sources online, whether those are India or Hungary or Turkey or Russia for that matter, besides the United States, it doesn't seem like it's available anywhere. So for you guys living in the United States, you guys might be able to use enclomiphene monotherapy or part of a post cycle therapy or to prevent downregulation when you go on exogenous anavar and not a testosterone base, which I honestly don't think is a good idea. If you're residing in the United States, you might be able to source it. Personally, I don't have any experience with enclomiphene, but it does look highly promising. And the reason why it looks highly promising is because many of us have already used enclomiphene, albeit only 62% of clomid, because clomid or clomiphene or clomiphene citrate actually contains two stereoisomers named enclomiphene and zuclomiphene. Now, clomiphene contains 62% enclomiphene and 38% zuclomiphene. They have the exact same chemical composition, but between enclomiphene and zuclomiphene, when you look at their molecular structure, you see that at the top of the molecule, the benzyl and the chlorine bonds are flipped. So even though they have the exact same chemical composition, because they're stereoisomers, they have a different molecular shape. So this results in a different effect. I believe that zuclomiphene has proestrogenic effects, resulting in some of the side effects that you get with clomid, like becoming emotional, because zuclomiphene attaches to the estrogen receptors in the brain, stimulating all kinds of crying while you're watching emotional movies or chick flicks, which you definitely shouldn't be doing while running clomid, because the zuclomiphene activates the estrogen alpha and beta receptors. Now, unfortunately, the relative binding affinity of zuclomiphene compared to enclomiphene is currently unknown. I can only find the relative binding affinity of clomiphene, which contains both in, a, let's say, two to one ratio. 
and clomiphene is said to be pro-androgenic because it stimulates testosterone production through the stimulation of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone when it attaches to the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So if you want to purely get this pro-androgenic or pro-androgen effect of clomid, it's better to go with one of the stereoisomers in the form of enclomiphene and not take the zuclomiphene. Now, Again, sourcing is going to be very, very difficult for anybody not living in the United States. Still, from all the medical literature that I've seen, if you can get your hands on enclomiphene, enclomiphene is superior. And most of us actually take clomid to get enclomiphene, and we don't want the zuclomiphene because besides the pro-estrogenic effects, it's also been shown that zuclomiphene has some anti-gonadotropic effects reducing serum testosterone concentrations in men. And on one side, you can say that clomiphene is only one-third comprised of zuclomiphene and two-thirds enclomiphene is where most of the benefits during a pulse psychotherapy or for monotherapy come from. But enclomiphene has a much shorter half-life compared to zuclomiphene. Zuclomiphene actually stays in your system for up to 30 days. And I believe that the detection time of its metabolites is up to 45 days. So while you might get the testosterone boosting effect through stimulating luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone secretion from the pituitary from clomiphene because it contains two thirds enclomiphene, these effects are shorter lasting compared to the zuclomiphene acting as an anti-gonadotropic for 30 days, maybe up to 45 days after clomid is discontinued. Oh, and before I forget another point for enclomiphene is because zuclomiphene is pro-estrogenic, it might also increase clotting risk, which is a known issue with selective estrogen receptor modulators. This is a no side effect of clomid, tamoxifen, raloxifene, tormaphene, but I can't find any evidence that a clotting risk is associated with enclomiphene. But it is associated with birth control, which are also highly pro-estrogenic. So it might be that the clotting risk from clomiphene is actually coming from the zuclomiphene, and if you take it out and you go with 100% enclomiphene, you mitigate that risk. The only risk of selective estrogen receptor modulators as a whole is that they block the estrogen receptors in the eyes, resulting in ocular changes. I can't find any evidence on PubMed that enclomiphene doesn't potentiate this effect. So for now, we would either have to say that these ocular changes are going to be a risk, Besides the potential mitigation of the clotting risks, which are associated with selective estrogen receptor modulators. So now it's up to you. Are you willing to make that trade off? The risk of having ocular changes and poorer sight from long term exposure to enclomiphene for the benefits of increasing one's testosterone production and overall fertility levels. To answer Alejandro Consuegra's question, I do feel that enclomiphene during a post cycle therapy is superior because you're exposing yourself to enclomiphene for four weeks, six weeks in duration at maximum, in which case your hypothalamic pituitary testes actually should be recovered just fine. Again, if you're following the guidelines which I set in this video about how to post cycle therapy correctly, I'll link it at the end of this one. That's a short term exposure. In that context, the potential for ocular changes might be warranted, but in a long-term time frame, over months or years, personally, I wouldn't consider it to be worth it because I do like to get 100% of the visuals into my eyes so I can perceive the world properly. So again, that's my individual risk to reward situation. It might not be the same as your individual risk to reward situation. You'll have to make that decision for yourself. And regarding the question of can you use clomid or enclomiphene on an oral only cycle, assuming that the dose is low enough of the oral, it should be possible. I also made a video about how to do an oral only cycle. It's called oral only cycles are in brackets for dummies. A little bit of a wordplay, but I do think that oral only cycles are for dummies. It's better to go with exogenous testosterone or ACG monotherapy with an oral steroid on top at the least. Because again, you can't 100% rely on enclomiphene or clomid to sustain your HPTA, have somewhat endogenous or comparable LH and FSH secretion as before 
when you were otherwise drug free. Because again, you're just blocking or modulating the estrogen receptors. Whereas anabolic androgenic steroids or selective androgen receptor modulators or progestogenic 19 nors, whether those are poor hormones or injectables, these modulate and downregulate the HPTA through the androgen receptor. Some of these compounds will metabolize into estradiol, further downregulating the HPTA through the estrogen receptors, which are now blocking or modulating with selective estrogen receptor modulators. And the progestogenic 19 or also modulated the progesterone receptor. So you get way more suppression through three different pathways, potentially, than the one pathway that you're trying to prevent. So you have to look at the total picture here in the context of using clomid or enclomiphene on an oral only cycle consisting of anivar, assuming the dose is low enough for the selective estrogen receptor modulator to actually keep LH and FSH levels somewhat favorable. Also keep in mind that exogenous and non-bioidentical anabolic androgenic steroids, and SARMs for that matter, also downregulate testosterone production directly in testicles because the testicles have androgen receptors too, and if they get activated by something foreign or super physiological dosages of testosterone, there's also a negative feedback locally. So even though your LH and FSH levels might still be optimal, optimal testosterone production might be downregulated by exogenous levels. Keep all of that in mind. Still, assuming that the dose is low enough, but still a low and effective dose, it might still work. Keep in mind that the selectivity of selective androgen receptor modulators is also dose dependent and the dosages generally required for anabolism are far higher to the dosages where SARMs are still skeletal muscle selective and don't activate the androgen receptors in other tissues of the body or other organs for that matter. Those are the dosages being investigated during clinical trials, single digit dosages, not double digit dosages which are being used by people in the fitness community. So you can still get downregulation if you go double digits on your SARM milligram dose. And, and also keep in mind, guys, that most of the clinical trials have already been discontinued. But again, I'll make a separate SARMs worth it or not video in the near future. Stay tuned for that. It might still work but it's not going to be optimal. The ocular changes might be a risk, might outweigh, far outweigh the potential anabolism you can get from a dose of oxandrolone that you can use by itself with clomid or enclomiphene to sustain testosterone production somewhat. If you want, I would rather go, honestly, I would rather go with ACG monotherapy and add anivar or another oral anabolic androgenic steroid on top to get more anabolism out of that. Because, well, from all of the blood work that I've seen on ACG monotherapy, serum testosterone concentrations are going to be way higher, in many cases, super physiological, even at a low dose of 500 IUs ACG three times per week. You can always escalate the dose upwards to 1,000 IUs ACG per day, albeit in most cases it's not really necessary unless it's for post-cycle therapy. In all of those blood works that I've seen, a low dose of ACG is far more effective compared to the blood work that I've seen from Clomid or Enclomiphene monotherapy. But to be fair, I've only seen two blood work results from Enclomiphene because again, it's not readily used and it's difficult to source. And with all of that being said, to answer Niccolo Saint's question, can you run Oxandrolone with Clomid? And do you need Arimidex with that? Drop the Clomid, don't consider Enclomiphene, go with ACG monotherapy instead. You probably want to do an oral only cycle, but you're still going to have to inject something for adequate or super physiological testosterone concentrations which work in synergy with oxandrolone good amount of test good amount of oxandrolone acg should be able to sustain testicular function to a much greater extent that clomid or enclomiphene ever can at any dose again based on the blood work that i've seen and yes you might need a remedex but preferably aromacin with that because ACG, besides testosterone increases, will also increase your serum estradiol. You might be able to get away with an over-the-counter supplement called Dialdomethane. I'll link it down below, 100 milligrams in the morning and 100 milligrams in the evening, which helps with estrogen balance between estriol, esterone, and estradiol. Low dose ACG, 200 milligrams Dialdomethane, whatever dose of Anivar you want on top of that. It's not exactly an oral-only cycle, but it's a, certainly a better solution than what you're proposing. 
And to make a long story short, Enclomiphene does have my seal of approval, albeit for short-term use. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find the next Vigorous Q&A on my Instagram page, at Vigorous Steve. It's also at Vigorous Steve for TikTok. Feel free to follow me there as well. And as always, you can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Have a look at some of my affiliates and sponsors so you can get 5 to even 20% discount while shopping online. Man, 20% on Enclomiphene, that would be great, right? That would be freaking great. And it is actually possible. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Maybe I should have done Enclomiphene monotherapy instead of ACG monotherapy, which ended up being bunk. But hey, I'm getting good results from Gorilla Mount Sigma. So, so far, so good. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.